the Village of Woodbury Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for July of 2024. Today's July 10th for the record. And if you would all please stand and join me in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll introduce the board from my left, your right. That's Ms. Beverly Silvera, Mr. Michael Wozniak, Mr. Ed DeJesus, Ms. Rachel Bruce, I'm Craig Brady, and to my right is Ms. Kelly Norton. And I think we can, oh, oh sorry, and our <clears throat> recording secretary, Ms. Jessica McLennan, who's also the village clerk. Make sure we get that in. Um, our next regular meeting will is scheduled for Wednesday, the 14th of August. Uh, to the agenda, we have no attorney-client session this evening. Uh, may I have a motion to accept the minutes from the June meeting as presented? Motion. Second. Motion by Ed, second by Rachel. Any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have two pieces of new business. Uh, we have received notice that um, <clears throat> for two up upcoming or actually before the planning board, uh, activities that the uh, we've received notice that the planning board would like to be the uh, lead agency for Secra. So the first is the Village of Curious Joel, Acres Road, and Denev Road access um, emergency access road, and the second is a 13 lot subdivision called Woodview Heights, which is section 204, block one, lot 34.2. Does anyone have any objection to the planning board of the Village of Woodbury serving as the lead agency for Seeker? No. 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 OK, thank you. I'll take care of that. All right, of course, I just lost it. Okay, our first item is actions on decisions. We have one on action on decisions for Valley Seafood. This is to review the draft decision requesting a variance for the construction conversion of an existing structure to residential apartments was pursuant to sections 310-6F and 310-7. The proposed conversion requires 22,000 square feet of lot area where 21,209 square feet are provided. Said property is located in the HB zoning district along Valley Avenue and Central Valley and is known in the Village of Woodray tax maps as section 230, block six, lot two. As a uh, so after several pages of facts and findings, as a consequence of the board's discussions, the Zoning Board of Appeals hereby grants the requested area variance as described and discussed above to the extent noted above, conditioned on the applicant maintaining the existing building footprint and not increasing the height of the building, and on the applicant receiving all necessary permits and approvals from the planning board and building department, and hereby finds that the variance is granted is the minimum variance necessary to preserve and protect the character of the neighborhood. Per section A316-9E of the Village Code, this decision shall expire if a building permit is not obtained by the applicant within 180 days from the date of this decision or the date of final approval by the planning board if such approval is required. The board may extend this time for one additional period of 90 days if such an extension is warranted by the particular circumstances. May I have a motion and a second to accept this uh, draft decision? Motion. Motion by Beverly. Second. Second by Ed. We'll do a roll call. <clears throat> Uh, Beverly, how do you vote? Aye. Ed? Aye. Uh, Michael? Aye. Rachel? No. And I vote aye. And so that is, that is concluded.
So you can ask now. So this was the final decision. The public hearing was held, I believe, twice, two months. We continued it. Okay, so, um, so, so who was notified in terms of that? Uh, requirements in the code regarding publications. I'd have to look to see what the requirements are in the code regarding mailings. But there is still a public hearing that has to happen before the planning board. I don't know. Uh, I don't know that it's been scheduled yet. I don't think it has. Okay. Then if it hasn't been scheduled, no, it hasn't been scheduled yet because they were waiting for this. To hear about the variances, you could watch the meetings for this application. If you want additional paper information, you go to the building department. In terms of having apartments and things like that. Stuff like that. They will have all of the application materials and they're online, the village's website. Right, I was just gonna say they're on the village's website. Okay. If you go to, um, are you familiar with the village website? Uh, okay. Um, I don't know if you feel like hanging around. I can show you afterwards if you, if you want to, but if not, um, you want to drop me an email, um, something like that, I'd be happy to, to let you know. It's under documents and forms on villageofwoodbury.com. Maria's going to show it to you right now. <laughs> okay. I just happened to see it posted. I didn't know anything about it. I live on a private road along the valley. So I know my neighbor is right on the valley, and she said she never got anything, so I wasn't sure how that worked in terms of family and family. Okay, moving on. Uh, public hearings. Sure, no problem. Uh, first up is 50 Greenwich Avenue. This is the continuation of a public hearing requesting a variance for the construction of parking of a parking area in front of a single family dwelling, whereas pursuant to section 310-7, the maximum permitted impervious surface coverage is 20%, and the applicant is proposing 44.2%. Said property is located in the R1A zoning district at 50 Greenwich Avenue in Central Valley and is known on the Village of Woodray tax maps as section 248, block one, lot 44. And I see you're present. Good evening. How are you? Um, so we did receive, and I believe your uh, PE received uh, memorandum from the village engineers. Are you aware? Um, I didn't see anything from the village engineer, but um, our engineers, the engineer that we hired, show for me, I can contribute on that, so I did not see anything. So this was a memorandum dated July 1st from the village engineers reviewing, and it was copied to Paul Gadansky? Correct. Okay. That's the engineer. Okay. So did he mention that to you, share it? Okay. Um, I... Um, I would suggest that we have the building department email this to the applicant as well because he hasn't gotten it from his engineer yeah, and perhaps uh, carry this over to your next meeting so that his engineer has an opportunity to provide a response if he would like to, okay. if you haven't seen it. So yeah, okay. there's yeah, a lot of information. There's in a there. lot of information. It's quite detailed. Okay. And I would... Yeah, you're going to want it to get right, a copy. So, uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear it. What is the next year again? August 14th? August 14th. 14th. Um, one other thing that, that I would ask from him before we let you go is um, the 44.2 impervious surface 44.2% impervious surface area includes what I'll call pre-existing, right? The driveway and everything was in the back. Okay. One of the things that we had, I thought we had asked for, but apparently it wasn't clear, the additional impervious surface area that was put in front. Okay. What's the square footage specifically of that? That was asked, but I know it wasn't part of the yes. um, documents that were sent in. 
So the, the additional amount, of, I, I did mention the approximately 1,000 square feet of additional area. Okay. Uh, but I'll have him uh, make those corrections and answer all the other questions. Yeah, if he, if he doesn't have to, 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 we don't want a whole new. He can submit a yeah. letter, memo, email. Just an email memo type thing that says the additional impervious surface added to the front connected, connected to the driveway is X. And what percentage of the total that is. Okay. Great. Uh, anything from the board? No. Not this time. Not at this time. Everything will be shared with his attorney. Uh, with his, it's the, his it's engineer. engineer. He does engineer. engineer. Yeah. Um, so just no. see if anybody's here to speak. Yeah, before we okay. adjourn it. Is anyone here to speak to this application from the public? This is 50 Greenwich Avenue. Going once. You don't want to talk? No, we're carrying it over. Okay. Okay. Now I'll take a motion to carry it over to the August meeting. Second. Rachel? Second. Second. Ed? Any discussion? No. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay, thanks. And our last item for this evening is Speyside. This is a continuation of a public hearing for Speyside Holdings II LLC requesting a special permit for the operation of a sand and stone quarry from 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday on property located in the R3A zoning district at 911 Route 32 in Highland Mills and is known in the Village of Woodbury tax maps as section block and lots 201-1-9. 202-1-3.7, 202-1-3.5, Is the applicant present? Okay, we're ready to start. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> we didn't lock the door yet. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> and I will echo our attorney's sentiment that that was a joke because it was from me. Besides, I don't have keys. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and I didn't notice. You covered it nicely. I'd like to have that added to the record. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a good one if we had a camera here capturing the views out there. Oh, like the owl, because then like, if there's any motion, it automatically zooms to you. Did, Jeff, did you pause? No. Might as well pause. <laughs> oh, don't pause. Never mind. <laughs>
to 9 p.m., which was previously had, to 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, the reason that we need to do the extended hours is um, f for crushing of the stone and also for equipment ma maintenance, uh, not, not mining um, at 4 o'clock in the morning. So, um, you know, it's been, this has been going on at this site for a very long time. I think there was a change maybe in ownership. They thought that the special permit would carry through. Um, your, your attorney has advised us, no, that's not the case. So basically, that's why we're here tonight. OK. Um, we had originally been presented this in January, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It was, and came in in December. Came in in December. And, and um, there's, we were expecting a lot of updated supporting documents. Um, in the ensuing time frame. So we did receive an email just today that um, is a forward, if you will, of the chain from, and I'll read it, from Ashley Johnson, uh, Regional Attorney, Region 3 from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, good morning, I received your inquiry regarding the mined land reclamation permit for Speyside Quarry. A timely and sufficient application to renew the permit was received by DEC on January 26, 2023. The permit is therefore extended pursuant to State Administrative Procedures Act Section 401-2. Uh, Please let me know if you have any questions. Sincerely, Ashley Johnson. Um, so that's the only information that we've received from the applicant, I'll say, in general. Um, one of the things that we had discussed is that there are one, two, three, four, five, there's six section block lots. And it's very unclear from the records and apparently, well, it's very unclear from the records what was approved for what. So feel free if you. Yeah, no, go ahead. I think you got to do this. But. Yeah, no, go right ahead and, and grab the mic. Yeah. Okay. Introduce yourself, please. Uh, Eugene Fernandez, uh, 1162 Townland Road, Hop Hog, uh, New York, 11788. I'm one of the owners of uh, Speyside Holdings. The, when we bought the property in 2015, there are, everything is controlled within the DEC land and mine. Okay, so what happens there is <clears throat> we only can operate on the parcels that go when you walk in the main gate. The 90 acres that's on the other side of the tracks, west of the tracks, we can't touch that yet because we have to do a rattlesnake study and everything else that's up there. They found a rattlesnake 28 years ago. So their concern was that. What we're really asking for is where the property is, where the plant is itself, where the actual building is itself. It's just really so we can have guys working on the machines because technically the DEC allows us those hours from 6 to 9. But we're not looking to really crush at 9 to 10 o'clock at night. We're really mainly, mainly move material around, load up trucks for the next morning, do the repairs on the machines, do all. We have a limited work, amount of time in this, you know, with this weather up here. So our concern is how much material we can produce. This facility has been a drain to us. We're into this for $30 million. We haven't made money yet. This will be the first year we're making money. Um, just so you understand, we also bought two properties, or actually three properties on, um, on Route 32, we bought 957, uh, not yet, yeah, 957, we bought 975, and I think um, 980 something, I forgot the apologies. We bought them, so this way, our philosophy is to hopefully put a, uh, how would you call it, a pre-cash plan. So if you see all the buildings that are going up in the area with tilt walls, that's what we like to do. Employ 65 to 70 people. The facility's there, we have the stone, we have the sand. It makes sense for us to just bring the powder in. So we bought that as a buffer so we don't have to worry about neighbors complaining about, oh, I hear noise and there's dust. There's only one more house that we're trying to buy, and we'll see what happens with that. But that's what we're looking for. It's just the, the hours from 4 to 10, like my turn, Mr. Joe had said. And we've been doing this, like I said to you, for, since 2015. So we're not going anywhere. We're here for a long time. You know, I'm, I grew up in Rockland, Clarkstown. Unfortunately, I moved to Long Island when I got married, so <laughs> I'm trying to get back up here. But that's really what we're asking for. I don't think we're asking anything out of the ordinary. And whatever we need to do to make the board happy and the town happy, 
we're more than willing to help that. <clears throat> okay, but this I think this is part of the the line of questioning that we have. Okay, because you own the six partials I mentioned. Yes. Right. Um, the application that you've submitted is for, as, as we see it, is for the operation of sand and stone quarry on all of those parcels. So this is part of our confusion, if you will. Okay. As well as the fact that it's unclear as to what the deck has approved in terms of actual mining operations, which of those parcels. Because well, from looking at okay. the GIS maps, 202-1-37 and 1-5, which are the two that you mentioned on the west side of the train tracks, Correct. do not appear to be approved for mining. No, that's all, the life of mine, there's a difference between approved for mining and life of mine. All the property has been encompassed as life of mine. So you need to make, you got to get certain standards to accept that life of mine. For example, you need to know the depth of the bench. You need to know the material. You're going to need the water table. So these are all components. The west side is not going to go there for quite some time. We did a rattlesnake study about two and a half, almost three years ago. We'll probably start that next year. That's a three to five year process. Our main function right now is the DEC gave us the, if you look at inside from the aerial, in the, we were optioned to go in there. We can go north, we can go south. Yes. Do you want me to show you on this by any chance? Would that help if I show you here? Sure, I, I, I have the GIS map here as well. I've overlaid the parcels on top of that with the mining section from the GIS. Sure. So, right? So this is the GIS map and that's the section that's been designated by the DEC for mining? Correct. Everything in the Thank you. Okay. So everything in within the blue means life of mine. Doesn't mean you can start digging at it and blasting right away. So from here to here, it's simple. It's all part of life of mine. The only exception that we have is the west side, which is this 202.137. That is probably five or 10 years away. We'll make the application. We'll do it just to prepare ourselves, but we're not looking to start that. Right now, we're in here. The property, if you notice, has a gas line that goes down the middle. So we're now talking to the gas company on moving the property. The reason we bought these other properties is so that we can hopefully move the gas line around because it cuts the property off. Makes no sense to have it that way, and we'd have to pay for that expense. <clears throat> we also bought, if you notice, you can in the tax maps you'll see we bought it under um, the other three parcels: John Lynn Bruno, John Lynn Bruno's daughter, and then uh, Kaiser, I believe is it. Uh, I forgot her name, her first name, Lisa or Mary Kaiser. So that's what we're looking to do. The permit is really for here, for these two parcels. Anything in here? We're not looking to go here. In fact, we can't even. We can go there but we're not allowed to touch it, we're not allowed to cut the grass. We could put livestock if we wanted to, but we can't, yeah, I know, right? I don't know, there's rules again. Yeah, there. there's, <laughs> I'm not sure you could do that either, but that's okay. Really? Um, the, 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 DEC said, the DEC said to us, you can't cut nothing, but you could put livestock. Well, so the DEC that's the DEC, but the villages, oh, village, I, village if you notice, yeah. we don't have anything there, except deer. Okay, so I think, I think we understand Right. What, what you're saying. Um, so therefore, what I would recommend is that you revise your application okay. specifically for, these. for the tax lots that you specifically want the current special permit for, okay. for the activities that are, I'll call them ongoing. Okay. Right? That's I think fine. that would make the most sense. Okay. Because as you said, it, well, I, I has, I'm not, I'll speak for myself. I would probably vote no for this overall, okay, if you were including that parcel. No. It's, I understand. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I understand. <laughs> it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So um, it behooves you to be clear in your application as to what parcels you're dealing with. Okay. So I would say that's the first thing you should do. Um, um, 
Okay. That's good. I'll turn this around. You can head back to the podium. So that was it? No. I know there's, I know no. there's going to be a lot more than yeah. that. No. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> uh, the entity disclosure form, I don't know if we have. Do we have that or not? We don't. So we need the entity disclosure form. And, and I, we can't seem to locate it. Um, yeah, Mike Pinella to the building department. No longer with the village. No longer with the village. Um, so I'll reach out to the building department and see if they have it, and if not, have them get in touch with you. Okay. Just make a note. And we would need that for the entities that own those properties. Those now, lots, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Now I'm not sure which ones own which ones. So yeah, it's the tax lots that you're actually applying for and the entity disclosure forms for the, the ownership of those tax lots. Um, so I think that covers most of what we have. Your EAF was unsigned. So I think you should take a look at the EAF and make sure that that goes through and gets signed and submit that to the building department. Um, as a note, if the prior owners did not inform you to the conditions of, well, of the special permit that was in effect from 97 through what? Well, well, really? the, the first one we have record of is 97, was the special permit for, the, am I right? There's a ZBA application in 77. Seven, ZBA in 77. I think it started, I think, 55 or 57. And then so effectively, the, the, the special permit we're talking about was, I believe, 77 would have been the first. 77. Um, the conditions of that special permit, basically, we're unable to find any of this, the documentation that was supposed to have been provided on an annual basis. So they were annual reports, um, and we're not aware of them. And okay, so this is one of the things that we mentioned in January. If you have them, can we get a copy at least of the last three years? I think that would be good. Right. Okay, because again, if you look at the special permit, because you did provide that in your package, um, those were reports to be delivered to the village, right, or to the, to the town at the time in 77. So it's not necessarily what the deck would require. It probably is largely redundant, I would expect, but that's what we're looking for, okay? I, I looked through here. I looked through here, and I. No. I think we did submit it. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up. I'm gonna find out from Michael Cox. But I believe we submitted it back in 17, 15, either 16 or 17. I believe, but I could find out. Okay. Uh, whatever you have would be helpful to it's us helpful. to understand and to see that there has been some effort at compliance. If, if the last you submitted was 17, I guess I would ask why, but it's not particularly relevant. <laughs> right? Um, I don't know that I'm missing anything else. Does any, any other members of the board have questions for the applicant? I did have one question. I'm not um, too sure this is in the, if, if you'd be able to give me this information offhand, but um, I know that you mentioned that you wouldn't be grinding stones or doing any what you would consider to be loud work during these really kind of sensitive hours. But do you know approximately how many decibels of sound loading these trucks can create for nearby areas, especially when it's lower, when it's later at night and less noise around? We've had no studies done. We'd be Okay.
All right, thank you. If right, you've done those noise studies, if you could provide them to the board, right, that would be helpful. Yes, okay. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. And actually, I just one more uh, question. For if uh, you mentioned that there, that generally you're, you're pretty isolated with the, with the properties you purchase, if there are any other, I mean, from what I can tell, there may be one or two houses that are still in the air, in the nearby area. Um, do, does the quarry operation does that pose any sort of danger to the you know to the, to the structure or to the, the stability of those properties or? No. Okay. This, that's all bedrock, right? It's all, it's all rock. I mean, it'd be different if it was on slant and it's all dirt, where you can hear the vibration. When you blast, when we blast once every week or once every ten days, you'll feel like a little, like a little shaking. And we notify the police department, notify the fire department, notify all the agencies. That's what we do. We don't blast. We have an outside contract. But there's no, there's no harm to any property. We've been in there since 19, I'm gonna say 57, I believe, operating, you know, and it's, it was a, it was run like a nice water. The, the, the Rocha family ran it for a long time, Bill Rocha stepped in, and he didn't take care of it, so we bought it at the right price. You know, we actually paid more than, than the other guy. But there's a legacy there. Anyone else? Dude, Good for now. I just want to say um, that I think it would be beneficial for you to rewatch the meetings from January and May because I know you said that there were no complaints, that, but there were people here. Um, even though it was adjourned, we have to open the public hearing for anybody that wants to speak that did have complaints. So just so you're aware of them. You're gonna have, we've already had people complain. What would they ask for? Did you pay the taxes or buy our house? I and just want you to be we'll aware that yep. there's we'll complaints. We'll see the meetings. We'll see, we'll see the meetings. We'll okay. like to see who they are. We already had that. You want to stay open? You got to buy my house. Now. Well, I think some of the complaints that were received were not along those lines, but were along the lines of there's dirt and rocks and things like that being transported onto the road. So I would just suggest watching. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for the heads up. Mm -hmm. I'll reopen this to the public. Anyone from the public wishing to speak to this application? And just so the public knows, it'll be interesting. We gotta sit down. We gotta sit down. And it, th this will be continued as, yeah. Maria Hunter, I was one of the people from the January and the May meetings, and so was my husband, Robert Hunter. Um, as a former planning board member, when it was under the town purview, it was probably in 1997, when the DEC sent out the information about the permit to be renewed. I was very vocal that since this was in our town of Woodbury, that we had to have control over this DEC application. Mm -hmm. The late Stu Turner, he did do the paperwork and we did get control of that meeting. And we were the ones that went down there and we, as the planning board, we looked at the property and it went before us as to why it never came back before the town slash village after 1997 for approvals. Shame on everybody because that should have been looked at immediately that this is our town, our village, and we as a planning board, zoning board, have the right, not the DEC because they don't live here. Mm. So that is my mun, that, 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 that just mind boggles me. And I'm glad it's here before the zoning board. And a um, couple of concerns that you're here. Um, when was the last time that this was actually before the town slash village of Woodbury planning board? Because since I'm no longer chairperson, I don't have any of my documents anymore. So I guess I'm asking someone to look into that to see when it was last officially before Woodbury because that makes a big difference. And then also, how come we don't have any of the DEC reports from 1997 if they approved all this? We need to see those reports because it was stated very clearly in 97 to protect not only the residents that lived right there in front of them, but the rest of Woodbury. 
I'm tired of washing my car with the debris that comes off of there. Because when we were on the planning board, it was clearly stated once in the morning, once at night, or as many times as possible, they're supposed to wet the road down to minimize the debris, the dust, the dirt. The stop sign, I don't even know if it's still there or not anymore. Those trucks come out onto the road. They don't stop. Because they're big, they just keep right on going. I've seen it, I've witnessed it. So have other residents in this town, and even people who come through 32. So these are some of the issues that need to be addressed. I know this is not what, I'll be taking this, because I'm sure it's gonna go before the planning board eventually. Also, the lead agency, we need to find out when the DEC sent out any paperwork to Woodbury to ask them if they were concerned. This is troubling. There's a miscommunication between the DE, New York State DEC and Woodbury, and we need to be on top of this. Granted, it's a business, and I'm, I've always been pro-business, but you have to respect the residents. And it's not just the residents that are on the north side of the railroad track on 32. I live on Route 32. I am constant, if I have trucks passing my house now at 6 a.m. to wake me up, or at nine o'clock or eight o'clock at night, it's, it can't be. We had restrictions, no Sunday work, no Sunday work, limited or no Saturday or limited on Saturday. This is a major business. It's not the applicant's fault, it's these truck drivers who don't respect us in Woodbury. I almost got clipped coming down 32 to go to work today before noontime. Hmm. Trucks are going south, going northbound, they go over the double yellow lines. There's no respect, there's no training for all of us. It's not just me. We've got people who live on 32 who are elderly, who are sick. Mm -hmm. There's gotta be some compassion somewhere from the applicant to the truck drivers. I know it's a good year every time they, you know, but you know, the other thing is, I've been there. I've been shown where that pit is and that was 20 years ago or whatever it was, 1990s, I can't even add anymore. It's very interesting how that pit goes like this. I've been all the way down to the bottom there when they drove us down from the prior owner. You keep digging and digging and digging. I don't know how deep it is. It's a pool of water in there. I don't know if that pool of water is still there. And those neighbors, houses that live on 32 that are on the west side of 32, if it's all bedrock, what's the structure of their properties? Do we know how deep their properties go with bedrock so that eventually how far back if they would ever get impacted? These are just questions to know. And, and I'm not trying to be against the business. It's there, operate accordingly, safety for everybody. And I think that was it. Unfortunately, my husband couldn't be here tonight, but he's, he's one of the ones that, with the speed. And the, and the noise. Right now I'm fighting with New York State DOT to fix a pothole that's just south of my driveway on 32. Those trucks hit that pothole, you think someone's having an accident. It scares me, because I'm like, oh my God, is there, did a truck go off the road? These are concerns, and, and let me tell you, they speed through town. Mm -hmm. The police department is aware of this. They try to do their best, I know they do truck stops by the former restaurant on 32, they take some of these trucks off the road. We're dealing with trucks drivers who don't have the proper permits. Mm. The trucks are illegal, they're overloaded. Look at the accident we down here just before the Neiman property. The truck load shifted and it tipped over. Whether it came from this facility or not, it's speed, overload, and just, we gotta watch what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Donna Buckley, um, I'm here to speak about the trucks as well. Um, increasing the hours of operation for three hours a day, Monday to Saturday, how is that gonna affect the trucks on the road? Is that gonna be more trucks moving at 4 a.m. like they do now till 10 p.m. at night? I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. These trucks are gigantic, filled to the top, barreling through town. I live in a 30, 
I can assure you, they're not going 30 miles an hour. Mm. I'm the crazy lady, you can ask any of the drivers, going like this on the side <laughs> of the road. And they're like, what, what is she doing? It's, it's, it's mind boggling how fast these trucks are going through town. So now I'm concerned, is this going to increase from 4 a.m. to 10 p.m.? I think that one of the things that we would be able to do with a special permit is we would be able to put conditions on that special permit as to various forms of, of restrictions on the operation. Because these drivers not gonna... have to be under time constraints because they drive like their lives depend on it. Like they can't get out of here fast enough. Right. That, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? And I'm not sure if this is for this board or whomever, but the main entrance, when you go up the main entrance, you've got the office building right in the front. Mm -hmm. The work is done to the, to the right. To the left, I don't know whoever approved this. Years ago, they wanted to do a rock crushing facility and macadam and all that. It was denied. There is a huge mountain on a piece of land that was flat. Why are there stones being stored there? Or the, whatever it is, it's being stored to the left of this office building, which is a high mound. Why? Who gave them permission to do that, to store it up there when that land was not supposed to be impacted for the neighbors that live directly down below from them, where the stream comes through? That's another issue that this board needs to find out. Who approved that? Thank you. Regarding the, the water in a hole, uh, the water does not come from the ground up. The water comes from the mountain down. Uh, we've done test wells, they call a dry hole. So water does come down. We do have a pump that pumps that water, but every quarry does, right? One's in the Hudson, you know, Tilcon's got quarries that are 500 feet down. In 1997, it was only 30 feet down. We've brought two more, it's three layers. We did two of those layers. So I think in 97, what she's seen was just, she saw the, the hill on the other side, and you can see the natural trees that are there. Two, uh, we, we have a water truck that we water the road with. We have a sweeper if we need to do that. Um, that's, that's the first issue. The, the other issue, and they all have, they have concerns. We maybe do 80 loads a day, 100, 100 loads is a bit busy day. There are a lot more than 100 trucks that come down Route 32 Dolly Lane because that's a major, major highway. I mean, I could put a counter if you want with a camera, and I'll have my engineers do that, and you'll see that we're probably maybe 5% of the amount of trucks that go on that road. We tell our drivers, drive slow. Regarding the overweight, we have a scale. When they leave that facility, if they are overweight, we get defined, we can get penalized, we can get in trouble. So or every truck has a scale on, has a, a weight ticket. So you have trucks that are permitted to 109,000 pounds, you have trucks that are permitted to 80,000 pounds, so, you know, a triaxle as opposed to a trailer. So these are all components. Um, the, the situation with the noise, if, if someone says they're hearing that, I apologize, I'll, I'll get the noise study for them, I'll get you the, the decibel numbers from the uh, plants. Um, uh, what are the questions they have, any concerns? Um, the, yeah, the expanded trucks. hours is not about putting more trucks on. It's the shifting of the hours of the trucks. Because what happens is we have certain jobs that we have to load up quicker or load up later. So it's the same amount of material going to that job. It's just it gives us the flexibility to do certain jobs. Like when the through was here, we provided the stone there. We got a permit from the town um, or the doctor's uh, contract is a permit town. We delivered there on Saturday and Sunday. We can deliver Saturday, but we were able to deliver on Sundays. I don't want to work on Sundays. Sundays for me is, is technically, I'm like Chick-fil-A. Stay home on Sundays, go to church. That's what we do as a family. That's me. Um, if my guys need to maintain something, it's a different story for the next one. But that's how I look at things. Um, so, the other cut that they had. Uh, the mountain? Of yeah, so the mountain. So what happens is and, and, and the board members want to come up there anytime. Just let me know. We'll come there during the day when it's working. 
So then it's five years, six years? All six years go together. They can't go together because then it's a meeting. But. Oh, okay. All right, I'm I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Shifts. Very good, Mr. Chergan. So. <laughs> that so, becomes so, an official meeting, which has to be open to the public. So just go three and three and make it easy, right? <laughs> we, we can do a site visit, though. Do a site visit. You'll see during work, you'll see the trucks going in, and you'll see how they operate. It's a union operation, right? Teamsters are in there. Operator engineers are in there. Um, and you'll see the improvements we're doing in that property. The... The material to the left side of it, okay, that's, we, that was there from day one. It's not impacting the houses below at all. We're not even close to them, right? And the houses below, they can do it. They, they, they haven't complained. So, I mean, they complained, I have to say that they complained one time because it was dusty. Our water truck went down for like four or five days. When they called, we, bought, we rented a water truck and we rented a sweeper to sweep the roads. We want to be the good neighbor. We've been that way from day one. We're not here looking to make headaches for people. We want this community to be, to me, it's a thriving community. I think it needs some business. This is a quarry. It's in a good area. You've got warehousing going up everywhere. Rockland County is not more land. I know Clarkstown's got nothing left. Long Island, you're not going out there. Maspeth, Queens. Brooklyn, all those facilities are closing down. So all you're getting is all the subcontractors, the HVAC guys, the distributing guys, they're all coming up to Orange County or Paramus, Bergen County. To us, it's the future to be here, right? I grew up in Clarkstown, I went to Clarkstown North. So I saw when my father was starting the concrete business construction, it was really, it was open land. Now you can't find anything. This is the opportunity, right? And I know we battle every day trying to buy land because the city community, Curious Joe keeps trying to buy more land, mm -hmm. right? Because, so I'd like to buy some more land ourselves. That's why we bought those houses. And we're gonna be looking to do with the private purchases. Not because we're gonna put business, but it's just something that we can put on there, whether it's employee housing, rent the fire for, you know, for some of the employees that come in. That's how we're looking at it. We're looking at it from that, that point of view. Um, I really don't know what else to say. I mean, you know, this is, this is a small, we're, we're, we're investors. When I say investors, we invest our own money. We've got a bank loan. But all our money's there. It's not like you know we have in partners that from different countries and like. Uh -uh. This is a business we want to grow. I have five kids, three grandkids. I'm hoping they can come in one day. Maybe I don't know. Right now they just like spending my money. <laughs> that's the biggest problem. But that's the that's the So whatever the board needs, that's what we're looking to put together. So like I said, anytime you guys want to make it, do it on a weekday so you can see the traffic. You can see the stone, you can see, you can hear the noise. And you'll see it's not as, it's bad. I, I, th I, I, for one, will take you up on the offer to okay. visit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, maybe we can coordinate that. Yeah, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, I think probably that's the best. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. You got life cool. insurance, right? Okay. <laughs> 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 I was like, I'll get more. <laughs> yes, for the record, that was a joke. No, it's a joke. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's, that's, my wife that's our council speaking. It's okay. <laughs> I, I got it. <laughs> um, we're going to defer this because obviously you have some information to gather for us. Correct. We'll want to do a site visit. And um, so we will. Any other questions from the board before I move not forward? This time. Uh, not at this time. Not now. I, I agree. Not now. <laughs> We'll try to get everything to you for the next meeting. We'll yeah, we need it seven days in advance. Getting it the day of is problematic because yeah, it's well, this was it's, it happens. It's okay. Just for a, you're going to provide a lot of material, I expect. You need to so, therefore, we need at least a week to be able to digest it, go through it, et cetera. And if this carries on for another month, that's fine, too. It's okay. Yeah, we're not going to. Right. And it's not going to. I'm not looking to. Start tomorrow. This is just planning for the future. Like I said to you, that's why we're buying the other houses. We're going to be coming back to make some zone changes in those houses, eventually take those houses down. That'll be the planning board yeah. and the village yeah. board. Yeah. Look, I did a lot of building in Long Island, not up here. So I know the planning board's in touch. So the next meeting, the day August 14th. Okay. Does that work for you? Did you want to kick Or do you want to? No, 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 no,
we could defer it to September if there is. No, it's okay. It's one day less. Okay. So may I have a motion from the board to um, continue the public hearing to our August 14th meeting? Motion. Second. Motion by Ed. I'll give the second to Beverly. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a nice night. All right, you Thank too. You. Thank you. Uh, we have no other further actions to review, so with no further business to discuss, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion by Mike. Second. Second by Ed. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.